so I will start uh, today. Uh, first, I will uh, start to uh, try to present uh, as I'm understanding. So if there's something wrong or maybe corrected, so just go uh, and stop me, okay? No, no worries, yeah, I will, I will try to do my best. I also didn't prepare very much for the chapter, so I'm, I'm looking forward to your explanation. Okay, good. So um, first, um, we will talk about uh, homophily. So what's the meaning of homophily? It's um, edge between two components of similar types. I'll try to annotate. So if we uh, have a comb two component, maybe uh, this component, uh, uh, both are boys or girls or a, a two um, persons in middle age or teenagers. So it's a component of similar types. So this is definition of homophily. Uh, so, uh, so after that, we try to quantify the homophily. But I want to um, quantify it mathematically before uh, going to uh, coding board. So um, if we're trying to, if we have a coin and try to toss this coin tw uh, twice, so maybe uh, we had the relation between um, uh, head and the head, uh, tail and tail. And head and, and tail. Sorry if I'm slow. Uh, tail. And tail and head. Okay. Uh, so mathematically, the probability of relation between head and head, it will be a uh, quarter. Uh, and um, the same between tail and tail, it will, uh, it will be quarter uh, the same. Uh, and it will be the same between he uh, head and tail and head and tail. So one divided by four. Mm -hmm. So when we sum it to this probability, we can, uh, we end up uh, with uh, half. So uh, mathematically, um, we can quantify at this point. So if we have um, so if we have two groups, uh, boys and girls, um, and we want to try to uh, quantify the homophily between two of these two groups. So so mathematically the uh, the expected, uh, the expected homophily between two this group is supposed to be half, but if uh, it will be lower than uh, this um, value, so can we can call this homophily. If it will be bigger than half, so we cannot uh, get any homophily in this uh, between bo between both to, uh, both groups. So. Um, if we to uh, go to, uh, to more details about calculation homophilus. Um, if we have uh, maybe uh, four girls and uh, maybe six, maybe six uh, boys. So, and uh, try to calculate all ages between all groups, so uh, end up with 18 uh, edges between all the groups. So what do you expect um, the homophily uh, or the expected value to be homophily uh, between two of these groups? So so there are two groups, right? Yes, uh, for, for example, four girls and six boys. So, and we try to uh, draw edges between each uh, um, individual in each groups and uh, edges between uh, groups in general. I can do uh, this by the annotation here. So I'm just asking what yeah. you expect about um, uh, the homophily of between two groups. Math by mathematical equation that we 
discussed earlier between um, about tossing coin. So it, it will be, the, the expected is half, as, as you said, right? Yes, yes. So half of uh, 18 equal. So, so it will be nine? Yes. But um, so this is the, the denominator, right? Okay. The denominator is uh, expected um, is expected relation between two groups, okay? Which okay. is nine mathematically. Okay. But if we um, maybe, for example, if we look at this uh, groups and we just end up with uh, three edges between uh, groups, so the denominator ah. here it will be three, okay? So um, the less this fraction, the more homophily we get and vice versa. I mean, when this uh, mutual repetition between two groups decreases, this means uh, more relation between same types in each group. So we have more homophily values. We have more homophily. Okay, I see, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And if we, and if we uh, have more values, um, more this fraction. So this means we have uh, more relation uh, or more edges between each groups. So less uh, edges in individual in each groups. So less homophily value. Yeah, I, I get the point, but because uh, what I'm not sure about is the numbers. So here we we are setting the denominator as nine. Yeah, but uh, what we okay, care about, I, I cannot draw. Yes, yeah. but what we care about is is the number of edges, not the number of of people, right? So we we have it it eighteen persons, but the number of edges between them is much higher than eighteen, right? Um, we we have uh, eighteen edges, right? Yeah. So, do we do we have eighteen edges or eighteen persons? This is no, why eighteen I've... edges. Ah, 18 okay. Edges. So now, now it makes sense. Yeah. Now, yes. now, so, now it makes sense. So eighteen edges means eighteen relationship in general in in all over the network. So we expected mathematically um, half of this eighteen edges. I mean half relation. Mm -hmm. It will be mutual relation. I mean mutual edges between two groups. Yeah. Right. Between so different is, different types. Yes, between okay. different types. So this is the denominator. This is expected mathematically. Yeah. But we, uh, if we draw this, but I can't uh, draw this right now because yeah. uh, I'm just to close the uh, annotation. Uh, it, we will, we can get uh, three or any number with any observation. I mean, just for example, um, we get uh, just the three edges between different groups. So this is the nominator or observed edges between different groups. Okay, yeah. Okay. So the, the observed so, over the expected number of edges. Yes, yes, oh. observed mean nominator over uh, expected means dominator. Okay. So, after this, uh, after getting this fracture, we just uh, end up with a conclusion. The less uh, this fraction value, the more homophily we can get. Makes sense, yeah. So yes, an, ex because... an extreme case would be zero. An extreme case would be zero and nine. So in zero? Uh, no, no, it's not just the zero. Um, we can just, to, at least at this point, we can understand the less um, the less uh, value we get uh, more homophily, and the more value of this fraction we get less homophily. Okay, makes sense. But we can but we can go more uh, into um, more details in this calculation uh, if we just um, enter this fraction uh, in this equation. So we have three probabilities. Uh, positive, positive value, okay. or negative value, or zero. Okay. If we can just uh, maybe four divided by nine. Negative. Um, this means the observed the observed uh, value is bigger 
than the expected value. This means there is heterogeneity and no homophony. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. This is... And zero, this is, um, uh, as I'm understanding till now, zero here means no, uh, no homophily, but um, I heard someone called this zero means zero, there is randomization. I, I don't get what he means, but I, I, zero at least there is no homophily. And the negative there's uh, no homophily and heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous edges, but positive means there is homophily. Yeah. So randomization, I think here it's uh, it's the opposite of homophily. So if, if you have the random relationships, so if the relationships are very random, then you expect that uh, members of different groups are connected. But if things are not random and they are very uh, connected within one group, then it will not be zero. So uh, randomization in this context, I think it's it means uh, uh, more ho more homophily, no less homophily. So yeah, zero. No, yeah, yeah, less less homophily. Zero, right. zero, there is no homophily. With yeah, value, exactly. we can get homophily. It's just random, random edges. Yeah. But, Makes sense. But then I, I, I will get, um, uh, I, will, I will share later with you with the video of this guy. It's more, okay. like, more clear for uh, calculations this homophily. But uh, let's return to coding bot here. Um, after the calculation mathematically and the understanding of the meaning of homophily. So, Um, so we end up with uh, this code board, just um, I didn't understand um, much of this code, uh, but he tried, tried to calculate the um, homophily by function called assertivity and get this, um, and this get value, um, mm -hmm. okay. Um, he said we can evaluate homophily and just uh, use this function. Um, and, and just uh, offered another way to calculate it by this word. Um, okay, so I think it was in the values. Um, by correlation. Okay. So he find uh, in this. Um, uh, in this code, he signed uh, every variable for each user in the network and um, end up with correlation value. So compare between uh, values that uh, we did, we get, we got from assertivity with the value we got from the correlation set, and it will be the same. Okay. Okay. Um, like here. Uh, I'm going from one and so it will be roughly I'm going to one. But I don't understand what. Okay, let me try to understand it. So race, however, is probably better considered as categorical variable. So they can be used to evaluate associated with categorical variables, whereas, right. Okay, so you know, uh, like here uh, in no in in the following, uh, you know the da, da, da. No, go to the previous code chunk. So go up a bit, down. So maybe you know the part where he calculated the correlation. Yeah. Correlation test. Yeah, yeah, so this this code chunk where he calculates the correlation. Can you see it? You see? Yeah, yeah, this one. So as you can see here in the so you have four lines of code, yeah. So in the first line, he he defines a data frame. Okay. And then in the next two lines, what he does is that he converts the 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 sex into a numeric. Okay. 
because you will use Pearson correlation and you need uh, numeric vectors. So, and uh, uh, sex is categorical, but here he converts sex into a numeric vector. Yeah. So here, maybe it will be one and zero. So, and to calculate the correlation uh, for a categorical variable here, he converts this categorical variable into a numeric. And then now you have two numeric vectors called six one and six two. So six one and six two it's just a numerical um, category from this category, right? Yeah, so you, you take the category. So here the category is six, and then you define it as a, a numeric. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the following, in the in the next part, he was trying, he wanted to do the same thing. But I think race maybe have more than one, uh, maybe have more than two uh, levels. So here, maybe in sex, you only have two levels. But in race, you have more than one, uh, more than two. So instead uh, of using the Pearson correlation, you can still use the categorical variable without converting it into a numeric. But what you would do is that you would uh, assign each level of this category a number. So for example, uh, here, maybe you have uh, four or five uh, races, you will give one zero, the second is one, the second is two, the second is three, as if they are actually numeric variables. And then you will use the assortativity nominal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so here, you can see that also like here, the in, in this code chunk, assort assortativity normal, he uses as numeric and converts the race into, uh, uh, into like, he takes the race, adds one, and also converts it as numeric. So it, it's just like, it's the same concept, not, but it's just like different ways of handling uh, the, the data. So sometimes you collect the data, it, you have quantitative data, you have numeric, things are continuous, maybe sometimes you have categorical. So these are different ways on how to handle the different data that you have in order to calculate the assortativity. So if we have um, more levels in race uh, than sex and we assigned uh, uh, numbers for sex, like uh, examples that you um, uh, provided me, uh, zero to zero, one, three and so on. Uh, so as this case, we find correlation between what and what? So, uh, so okay. Uh, so here in in the in the in the code chunk where you have the correlation test, he takes the get edge list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see this function is called get edge list. So he passed the fun he passed the network called network fifty nine. And then he uses this function called get edge list. And probably you will end up with a data frame where you have two columns. So you have column called X1 and another column called X2. And what you are trying to do is you are trying to correlate the type, the category of, and here it's the sex of uh, the first node. It's an X1 column to the type or the category, the sex of, uh, the the connected node. So you have uh, to each two nodes are connected by an edge. You look at the type of the first, you look at the type of the second, and you do this for the whole network, for all of the edges, and you try to, co to correlate them to each other. That's it. OK. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it will be the same right, uh, as we discussed. But, um, uh, but in this, uh, function assertivity normal um he just mentioned that this function can be evaluate the assertivity i i mean evaluate homophily uh for categorical variables but i didn't understand why um we get this number over uh, zero four uh compared to what compared to the to the number that we got previously the 0 0.2? No, no. Um, he just uh, um, 
in this part, uh, uh, we didn't compare anything but um, uh, use this function assertivity nominal to evaluate the assertivity itself. I mean, uh, to evaluate the homophily, but I didn't understand uh, why we get this number or um, what the meaning of this number in this case. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's difficult to make sense of the number on its own, yeah? So you will have to compare it to a background and this here, maybe it, it was not the focus. It was just trying to give uh, another example. So he shows we can calculate it for sex. You can calculate it for race, but it, I'm not, I don't think that he wanted to interpret or evaluate whether it is high or low or something like this, yeah? But yes. I mean, the, 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 I mean, I think that the important thing here is uh, first, like the, the introduction that you have given, and also that you can interpret homophily as correlation, and how to handle the different data types. So, if you have categorical data, you can still look for the homophily by converting it into a numeric. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so next, we can go to. Um... Before going to the next part, if we have, at this point, we understand homophily can, that uh, it's... Uh, can I add something to... Uh, yeah, about, sure. uh, yeah, about the assertivity normal function? So, you know, like... Uh, yes. Uh, and, uh, something very, when you start to learn about statistics, uh, you, one of the first things that you learn about is the different the types of data, yeah? So, you might have heard of nominal data, and ordinal data, yeah? So this is uh, actually, so for the assertivity function, so it's a, an assertivity function for the continuous data. But if you are dealing with categorical data, you have the nominal data and ordinal data, yeah? So here yeah. nominal means that you are dealing with a categorical of a nominal type. Yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. so this is it, I wanted to clarify this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so before we go on to next part, we understand that homophily is um, uh, edges between uh, two components of the similar types. I mean, maybe boys, girls, or similar ages, and so on. So um, how can uh, we make sure of the, um, uh, if that the single factor that really uh, represent the case or represent the real value of homophily. I mean, um, for example, in uh, example of boys and girls, uh, what if there is other factors um, maybe affect on the um, the value, not just the, the gender. I mean, there is another factors like trustivity or reciprocity maybe uh, lead more value of homophily, but this is the, the real uh, case. Um, because in this, uh, as the, he mentioned, the transitivity can be um, increase the value, uh, but but it didn't uh, represent the real reference in the same type or, or in the group uh, that contains uh, same types. So we can uh, fix this problem by uh, exponential random graph models that. Um, give us outcome of uh, incentivation of a set of, um, of multiple networks or um, uh, all possible or, or set of possible networks that give uh, us outcomes that way that uh, help us to represent the real value of homophily or represent the real reference between uh, same types of each groups, okay? And this is outcome can have in stochastic process. Um, is this clear? Yeah, a, a little bit. I think it will be clearer as you go through the example. So if, if I got it right, so we want to calculate some of the phrase, but want to with that. Okay, I can just unclick, try to unclick. Um, I see. Yeah. So you, you would like I to, to uh, yes. control for other factors yes. that might contribute to the homophily, but are not actually 
driven by homophily. So they are not driven by an in-group reference, but they are driven by other factors. Yes. Okay. So yeah. it really represents the real reference between uh, gables, for example, if we want, to, uh, as a gables, we want more connection between us more than uh, connection with other genders, boys uh, and so on. Um, so uh, in this case, the question is, does, does uh, gender here, I mean, maybe girls really prefer more connection between um, each of them than their connection uh, with people, uh, with, um, with boys, or is there other factors that affect on this value, maybe transitivity, maybe reciprocity, and, and so on of uh, factors in network? Okay, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we can try uh, fix this um, um, fix this uh, problem by uh, this model, uh, exponential random randomization graph models. Um, at first, we will install some packages. Uh, why we uh, why we install StatNet? Because um, the model is a graphical object, so we want to uh, statistical network. So we want to this package to. Uh, to use some function after that to convert uh, object um, object or, uh, object network or graphical network uh, to statistical network to can to can calculate the real homophily. Okay. Okay. Uh, so after installation, some uh, graphs. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes, um, after installation of statnet, uh, statnet and use this function as network. So um, uh, get some calculation here, uh, number of vertices uh, and if it's directed or not. Uh, and of course we have not hyper, we have, uh, we, we don't have multiple uh, by bar, bar type. I don't know what is mean by bar type and so on. Um, and there is no by, edges. Uh, bipartite is uh, a type of network where you can have different, maybe two types of edges. So, for example, uh, we when we talk about uh, edges, we talk about that uh, two nodes can be connected with one edge, but sometimes they can be connected with multiple edges. So, in the case where two nodes can be connected with two edges. So for example, one edge would represent whether they belong to the same group and another edge, whether they belong to the, uh, maybe they are, they are friends or something like this. So this would be bipartite. Okay. Uh, and the, what's the meaning of no edge uh, attributes here? So here it, it, uh, it simply means that edges has no attributes. So an attribute for an edge, maybe you, maybe you have a, a value for the edge that would represent the strength of the connection. Okay. So maybe one edge, like uh, well, if you have uh, different edges, like not all connections are the same. Yeah. So some edges are stronger. They have, we have more confidence in them. So maybe this can be considered edge attribute, but also maybe uh, in the case of, of, of bipartite graphs, an edge attribute, maybe one edge would be uh, whether they belong to the same race and another edge would represent whether they belong to the same sex. Yeah. Okay. Um, and after that, we ported over our node, so we get uh, this model. But uh, again, still didn't understand what we uh, can get from this model. I, I just see some directed uh, uh, directed edges, but uh, maybe we need to uh, not, uh, yeah, mm. to 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 understand it together. I can go back to the code, the the part because I see that he took the network. So you could go back to go up a little bit to the parts where he, you know, there is an, a line of code called set seed. Yeah, here. Yeah. So he, so here the, the instructor, like he installed the, the packages required. And then 
what is done here is he set the seed. So set the seed. I'm not. Are, are you familiar with this function? Set seed. Mm, no. Okay. So I, I think um, I think it's number uh, maybe number of nodes. No, no. So uh, because if you are doing a random process, yeah. So you are maybe selecting uh, uh, some. You're maybe you're doing a sampling process or doing a random process. You're selecting some numbers from a distribution. This is a random process, yeah? So uh, every time you do it, you will get different results because it's random, yeah? But when you're doing the analysis, you would like to get the same results every time you run the same code, okay? So what you do is that you use a function called set seed and you give it a number, just any number. It doesn't mean anything here, yeah? But what it means is that it will ensure that every time you run this part of the code, you will get the same number. And as you can see, the following line, it uses the function sample, which is like for sampling, random sampling. So he randomly sampled from the original uh, a graph. So the original network, he, uh, he random, he sampled, he randomly samples 350 nodes. Okay. So here, he sele uh, sele we, here in this part, we selected uh, 350 students. So these are the names of the students. And then in the second part, we, uh, we delete the vertices that are not in this part, yeah? So basically, in this part of in this code chunk, what is happening is that we take our network and we sample it. We take a, a random sample, a sub network. Okay. Uh, and and th this is it. And uh, yeah, so here, this is what is happening here. And after this, uh, we take another look on the network. And this is how it looks like. You have a lot of nodes where they are not uh, connected, or maybe you could, because, yeah. So this is the we, we in the chapter we didn't have a, a plot for the original network so that you, we could go back and compare it. But yeah, and no, sorry. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, so this is the the sub network. But now, why we did the sub network? Uh, function to convert will subset the data here because it takes forever to run. Ah, okay. So I think it, it's uh, it's mentioned here that this is just for computation because it takes a lot of a uh, very long computation time, and we have a large network. So it was just a wise thing to do is to just take a subset of the network. So as uh, use directed it just means um, we limit number of nodes in this network uh, it, uh, no, no, this is this is our network but what we did is that we wanted to run this ergm analysis and it would be very computationally intensive to run it over the whole network yeah mm -hmm. so instead of using the whole network and waiting edges for it to run we only selected a subset of the network to run the analysis on it yeah so yeah, so this is how or this is what the the network that we'll be working with looks like. But the for for the directed edges, I don't know because maybe we need to go back to the beginning to understand uh, what they represent. But yeah, you could you could go on. Yeah. Okay. Um. So uh, the first term is you mentioned that we can use in ERGMF uh, models, um, ERGM models. Uh, Edges, edges here means uh, count how many edges that we have in the network. Um, use this code, and um, then we can interpret this coefficient. Coefficient means um, they mentioned that he is a likelihood of toy uh, for any change for unit in the predictor. I didn't mean that. Uh, I didn't understand. Um, what he mean by likelihood of toy for a unit change, maybe intensity of the network or uh, density, sorry, density of the network or what, did, what does this mean? So here, uh, maybe, maybe I can. So if you look at the ERGM code, 
Yeah, so you could see that uh, it, it says stat net 59 till the edges, yeah? Net 59? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Till the edges. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, uh, it, are, are you familiar with the regression models in R? Uh, yes, a little bit. Okay, so this is actually the same thing. So uh, the same way to read it. So on the left, the stat net 59, this is the dependent variable. And then okay. here, edges is the independent variable. So edges is the predictor. Yeah. And stat net is the, the, the result or something. So if you have X and Y, so stat net would be the Y, or this, this thing, the thing that you're trying to predict and edges is the predictor, yeah? And the way you, we usually interpret uh, linear models is that we say that, oh, uh, one unit change to represent the coefficients of, of linear models, we say that a coefficient means the effect we would have if we change it one unit in the predictor, uh, and this is exactly what it is said here. So it's a unit change in a predictor. It's basically just how to interpret it. And if you know a little bit about linear models, it's just saying the same thing. Okay, so uh, toy, uh, toy term here, uh, mean edges. So uh, likelihood of a tie for a unit change. So coefficient represent the change in. Dog or a tie. No, I so maybe I think maybe tie is also an edge. I uh, yeah. Uh yeah, maybe maybe it is. I'm not quite sure. Um Maybe number of edges, I think. I don't know, maybe uh, as the result uh, shows here edges and then number. So this may be a predictor and then number of edges itself. No, no not the number. So this is the, the coefficient, right? Uh, yes, the coefficient. So this is the probability. Okay. So, so this is the probability. You take the coefficient. So, and then you apply the function that is defined here, the inverse log it. To, to convert the coefficient to probability, yeah? So mm -hmm. here, this, is, this would be the probability. So the probability of an edge being in the graph is roughly 0 0.02 being drawn. Should there be the same? Yeah, so this should be the probability of having an edge in the graph. So this is the, the likelihood, but this is uh, 0 0.02. Uh, this is the uh, probability of uh, showing edges in the graph. It's not the same. I mean, the coefficient is not like the probability of getting edge in the graph. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know why the the numbers are not matching. I think that the, maybe this is a mistake. I, 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 think, I think we that... calculated the. Yeah, uh, but this, we get, but, we oh, yeah, get this number early. But no, no it's it, not, yes. Yeah. I, I think it's a mistake actually. Like uh like maybe he forgot to to correct it. But yes. oh point it should have here it should say 0.04. Yeah. Yeah. Um so we, we can uh, after this code uh we can use another uh, function network density to calculate the density. Density means um, the observed divided by uh, the possible uh, edges of network, right? So it's the same. Um, because they mentioned in theory, it should be same. It should be same, I mean, um, number of edges in the graph or number, uh, or, um, number of edges, sorry, probability of edges should be drawing in the graph should be equal to the density of network. But uh, I don't know which theory they, uh, they meant, but uh, they mentioned that. Yeah, so it's a, a different way of calculating the same thing. You can calculating the same thing. You can either use network density or you could use the ERGM model. 
and use the number of edges as the predictor. So both would give the same results. Yeah, I think this is what he's trying to say. So one way. Um, yeah, go on. I think this is, I think this is the, uh, not what he meant because um, we should calculate network density uh, to, to uh, ERGM model work uh, accurately. It should be set on uh, that the graph that should be, um, sorry, the probability of edges that should be uh, in the graph should be set equal to a network density. So we sh we uh, we should set this model on this um, uh, on this rule to work uh, probably. Uh, I I mean that this is what. Uh... The reason it, it works, the reason they give the same number is that they are actually different ways of, of, of calculating the, the same uh, attribute. So using the network density, you calculate the probability of an edge being drawn and using the ERGM with the number of edges as the predictor is the probability of an edge being in the graph. So I think it's a, it's a, Maybe yes, different ways to look at the same attribute. But yeah, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not familiar with the RGM models. It's my first introduction to this concept, but it's it's interesting. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the phrase I I mean the probability of um, of edge being drawn shot in theory uh, be the same as density. So yeah, maybe a result of the RGM, not uh, just input to RGM. Yeah. Okay, uh, but uh, the next step we want to uh, model this uh, ERGM model in a stochastic uh, process because we want to um, set all possible or, or not all, uh, but set couple of possible networks to get outcome uh, that represent real value of homophily. So we want to generate ERGMS um, in a stochastic process. Uh, but he mentioned that uh, the problem here is uh, that the probability with each edges are drawn should be set equal to the network density of our observed graph. But I don't, I don't know why it should be a problem because I don't know. I I uh, I don't think it's a maybe it's not a problem after all. Yeah, it's a it's just a feature of the model. The only constraint. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, like the uh, the constraint is a the constraint is a feature for the model, and the constraint here is defined by by the network. Like I mean, if if you could go back to the code where the ERGM is run, do do we encode this? No, it, yeah, here. So you, as you can see, I don't I don't see that we are encoding the density, the, the network density in the model. But I think here here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, here, but uh, here we calculate it, but we don't uh, use it as an input for the for the model. We just give it the network, and as a feature of our network, uh, the the network density is calculated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so here. So yeah. Go, go, yeah. So still, in this case, we, we cannot uh, generate stochastic process. I, uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think that uh, we can't because this is what we have done in the model. Yeah, so we used RGMs 
to to model this as a stochastic process. At least this is where I understand. Uh, but yeah, may maybe I will have a better understanding as as we move as we move on. Uh, okay. Uh, so after that, he, he just explained some uh, ways to fit this model um, and improving this fit. Um, uh, because this, he just um, calculate uh, summary. Um, and this, uh, so yeah. Um, Uh, I, I don't know what, what's um, the likelihood here. We can, uh, what this values give us um, in terms of information. So this is the, the, the output of the model, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the, the estimate here, this would be the coefficient, I think. So this would be the coefficient for which we talk. And then we calculated the, the log it, the inverse log to get the probability, yeah. So if you could go up, you will find that we used, so this is the, the, the coefficient, yeah. But it's, it's not negative five, I, I think. So, yeah, but here uh, you, are, you are comparing it to this number, right? To 0 0.004? 0 0.04. Uh, no. Um, well... Not 0.04 or uh, 0 0.004. Yeah. So, but but this is the not the value the probability after uh, we took the coefficient and then we calculated the inverse log. So, if you could go back up, go go back. I will show you what what I'm exactly trying to say. Uh, yeah. Here, can you see this function called inverse log it? Yes. Okay. So inverse log it would take the coefficient. So maybe I could quickly open R and try to do this. It shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, so if you are using R, actually, if you have R open and then you took the, the function, yeah, exactly. Uh, go, go take the function that is uh, called inver, envlog it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, here you have it, yeah. Then, uh, but yeah, I, I think you have something running and it's taken a lot of time. You could either stop it or I can share my screen and show you how to, what okay, would happen. Okay, please. Okay. Yeah, so I, I could quickly share my screen to not interrupt your, the ongoing process. Okay, share the screen. Okay, so can you see our studio? Yes. Okay, so simply I took the function that was defined as inverse log it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I passed the the value of the coefficient, and then okay. the result would be this, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but but now it's easier to interpret because this is a probability, and also we can compare it to the network density. So it's difficult to uh, deal directly with the with the coefficient, but we need to inverse log it. Okay. Okay. But that's it, yeah. Yeah. Back to you. Thank you. Can you stop here? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Uh, Thank you. No <laughs> Yeah, go on. Um, uh, okay, so, so um, uh, when we look at this uh, value, we, uh, we calculate this estimate number, not standard, uh, not standard, right? Uh, say it again, sorry. 
I, uh, when we um, we look at uh, when we look at this uh, values, I mean we uh, we can uh, calculate the likelihood by estimate uh, term, not uh, standard error, right? All right. So go back to the to the R markdown book. Go back to the book. I will show you. Uh, this function, oh. uh, this code. No, because now now we are sharing your R studio. Really. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, now I see it. Yeah. Go 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 back to the summary output, the output of the summary function. Yes, yeah. I I mean uh, this number um it's uh, it's a value of likelihood. Uh, so we uh, calculate by estimate um, term. I, I mean not standard error and other values like z value and so on. Okay, so this this is so here we have four values, okay? Mm -hmm. and the, the four values give you different informations about the coefficients that you have calculated in the model. Yeah. So the first one is the value of the coefficient, yeah. But yes. then you you are interested whether the this this relation between the predictor and uh, the network. Is significant or not? Yeah. So you would mm -hmm. also maybe interested in looking at the p value, which you can see here at the end. So it's a significant relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So each part of this, each each value gives you a different information about the model, about the predictor. But yeah. usually, so what you are interested in depends on your question. So here we are interested in the estimate, and maybe in the following part of of the in, in the remaining part will need the remaining output. OK. Um, Sin, again, they mentioned that we estimated random address and set the probability of each uh, being drawn to be equal uh, to our network density. Um, I think the idea here, we, we should simulate a random address to, uh, to end up this result to, to get the probability of each being uh, drawn to be equal to density, right? Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, but um, we just didn't know it as the time. I mean, we need more um, maybe steps to uh, to know that. I, I, let's, let's go on. Um, and here, because it's a very large, uh, uh, we just Examine five is five nine the first nine simulations and compare number of edges of our observed graph to average of simulated network. Um, I'm not sure what's the purpose here to compare number of edges of our uh, observed graph to average of simulated networks. Maybe um, check or uh, check of randomness of our simulation or or what's the purpose here. So what, uh, so what, what I think what we have been trying to do is we would like to see the, if homophily, if, if the, the, the homophily score that we get is actually driven by homophily or it's driven by something else, yeah? Mm. So to do this, you have to have a background, a distribution, and this is what is happening here. We build the model based on our network to, model the network and then based on this model we could simulate many other networks yeah mm -hmm. and then uh, what you would usually do in statistical inference is that you compare you compare your uh, sample of interest your network of interest to the distribution yeah mm -hmm. and by comparing it to, to a distribution you could compare it to a parameter of this distribution and here you compare it to the mean to see where does it fall. So if you could go down, you could see that here, this histogram of the whole all distribution, all the simulated networks. And then you could see, oh, now I have the distribution of all the simulated ne network. Where does my observed network fall compared to all the simulated ones? Yeah. And it's really, it's, uh, it's very close to each other. So this mean, um, even after running the uh, ERGMS um, model, um, we still 
know that the, the gender or the, uh, the same variable still affect on, um, on the uh, homophily. Uh, I mean, uh, even there's, uh, if there are uh, other factors, it, uh, they, they didn't affect on the um, preference between the same types. I mean, affect on the real value of homophily. So it is the same if, if we run uh, ERGMS models or didn't, we, we, got, um, we will uh, get the same value or maybe close value to each other. I, so I, I don't think so. So here is what is happening now, okay? So, so far we have built the model and what we are trying to do now is we're trying to see if our model is fit or not, yeah? Yes. So what, it, what, what we expect is that the, the simulated network would be simulated after our network, yeah? So the network, our network shouldn't be very different from the simulated network. So mm -hmm. the, expect, uh, the expected distribution, uh, our network should be near the mean. If this okay. is the case, this would mean that our, net, our model is good and we could use it for the inference problem. So whether homophily is affected by other factors or not. But so far okay. we haven't done this yet. As far as I understand, yeah. So what we are doing now is trying to tr troubleshoot or try to understand more about the model because you just, maybe there's something wrong with the model. If, for example, you found here that the, the observed network density doesn't fall in the middle, this would mean that, oh, uh, this doesn't seem right. This, this is not what we expect. But okay. so far, we see that our model is working right. But after all of this, we will start to do the, the modeling for inference. Like after we make sure that the model is working right, is, is sound, then we start to uh, use it for inference. And I think this is the following part. Do I, okay. do I make sense? Yes, I get it clear now. Okay, great, yeah. Um, and uh, this, uh, after that, we can to, um, go to another way to, to just uh, evaluate the, Fitness, uh, the fit of the model uh, exactly. using this function, uh, goodness of fit. Um, and here, um, the only pattern that showed that we uh, got fit of the model, this uh, pattern, each Y is shared, but other, um, uh, but other patterns like uh, in degree or out degree doesn't um, show the good fitness uh, fit of the model. Um, so to, to, uh, to improve this fit, um, yeah. we can use only diet independent terms. Um, he, he, he mentioned that we can use only diet independent terms, but for different levels of hemophily. Um, I mean, we can specify a attribute we want to examine for for different levels of homophilies for different groups, uh, as I as I understood the now. So um, by this code, we can get this information and compare um, each variables. Like we get this um, in this result, grade and race has. Um, have uh, more coefficient than others. But when I look at this information, I see that um, gra um, the grade okay, uh, ha um, has more coefficient, but race actually is less than six, but don't know why uh, mentioned that uh, race and the grade ha have more uh, coefficient than six. Grade and race have large coefficient. I, I also don't know. So it, it's obvious that grade has a larger coefficient, but maybe relative to race, yeah? So compared to race, they have a large coefficient. Yeah, maybe. But still, six uh, is more than, um, than race, right? 
This this is true, and as you can see, race is not significant as well. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, uh, let's try a different set to T. What is the meaning of T here? Let's try to. Uh, T here would be a capital T is just true. So, mm -hmm. okay, so no node match set to true. Uh, we will limit our examination to only grade race categories represented by a large number of race in our network. We will so, in this code, in this code, we Try uh, different levels, uh, maybe different variables, uh, race, sex, grade, and here try to uh, uh, simulate in more larger, uh, larger number of vertices in our network. Uh, yeah. Um, ah. Okay. So. Let's see. Uh, every variable is significant race here. Okay. Ah, so as, as you can see here, that uh, for for example, in the race, you have white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and mixed a uh, mixed other. Uh, go up if you could go up to. Uh, he, yeah, here exactly. Yeah. So as you can see that uh, there's this function called table. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not run. So we don't see the output here. Yeah. So the what this would show is the number of nodes that belong to each race. Okay. So and here we have five races. So we have white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and mixed other. But apparently that we have very few Hispanic and Asian. So now when we uh, re-evaluate the model, we limit the race to level one, two, and five, white, black, and mixed, because they are the one that are highly represented in, the, in our model, in our network. So we don't include Hispanic and we don't include Asian. We, or we only include nodes that belong to white, black, and mixed. Uh, the same thing because in, in male and female, we have only two levels and they are highly represented, but also you can see that for the grades, we limit the grades to grade seven up to 12, and we don't include lower grades. Yeah, so this is again, based on usually like modeling, you, you model the data, you look at the model, you evaluate the model, and then you improve upon it and you keep going into, uh, you keep doing this multiple times. So yeah, this is how, how I, what I understood. So, so in this part, um, modeling the variables in general uh, without uh, different levels, without excluding some levels and including other levels, right? In this part. Uh, yeah, this is what I understand. It's like... But the next, it's, um, it, it's, it be more um, differentiated to levels. I mean, including one and two uh, and excluding four. Yeah, so as, as you could see here, like he, uh, the, the author says that we will limit our examination to only categories represented by a large number of vertices. Yeah, so you, you look at uh, the, the, the vertices that represents each level and you select the ones that are highly represented. That's it. Because yeah. I, because what, at the end, what you would like to calculate is the homophily. Yeah? So maybe if you have a group that is very small, you're not actually interested in calculating the homophily in this group. Yes. Um, and this uh, and this is a part. Um, the previous part is the mention that it's an uh, independent diet, but here diet dependent terms, um, like uh, for reciprocity, we use the mutual um, and using this code and getting this information. 
um, usual here to increase the coefficient, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, the other, uh, and this is part uh, a term for triadic closure. Um, so it, it just assists uh, more levels and more factors to, to get the accurate value. So there are a few terms for threats. Uh, one example, triangles uh, to lead to degener degeneracy. Uh, degeneracy, like um, uh, if we have uh, some edges, uh, I, I think it's like that, something like that. So th this is degeneracy, right? Right, uh, I'm asking okay. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, not I'm asking <laughs> this correct. With, yeah, I'm not familiar with what degeneracy means in this context. Now let's add the term for triadic closure. There are a few terms for triads. One of them, triangles, tend to lead to degeneracy. Ah, degeneracy terms behaves better. So, yeah, what? I don't know, like I, I, I don't really understand what uh, what it means here, but what, what, what I get is that we added the dyads and then we added triads. And now we, yeah, so. <laughs> yes, it's a good time to use Basu. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh... The summary, yeah, it, it, it's sad that there is no conclusion or interpretation of, of, of the model now. Yes, he just said good time to use bathroom. Yeah, because this will take a while. Yeah. So as you can see that uh, this, this quad chunk is not run maybe. So let's look at the goodness of it. I mean, definitely an improvement over the random graph. So you can include balance and multiple terms, interpret the results, simulate the graph of this model and compare it to your original graph. <sighs> yeah. Okay. He just uh, he just wanted us to um, code um, uh, this different code for different uh, factors and compare uh, to each other, maybe. But there's no clear conclusion here. Yeah, I see. But I I. I... I, I I get what what was is the goal of this chapter what is so yes yeah that's interesting so I am uh I've not been familiar with ERGM models before to be honest but yeah. this seem to be a powerful way to model networks and uh, generating net random networks uh yeah and that's it we finished yeah. Great, thank you a lot. But uh, which part that you've, so you have also, oh, last week you didn't present, right? There were no session last week. Maybe I can sign to this uh, next chapter. No, but uh, no, I'm, I'm not I'm not pushing or something. I'm just asking you like, uh, you didn't meet last week, right? Uh, sorry, didn't hear. No. Uh, uh, did you meet last week for the book club? There were there, there was there a session uh, last week? Yes, but um, actually Abdurrahman wasn't available, so there is no one. Ah, okay. But you didn't record. You didn't do a session, or did you do a session? No, there um, since there is no one, so I didn't uh, represent. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so this this chapter should have been presented last week, right? Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, did did you try to have you tried to run the code or? Um, I have a problem in running code. Yeah, I see uh, that you have a code that is still running. Uh, uh all uh, many parts uh, when I running it, uh, at least it doesn't uh, show any graph here, just uh, 
just this uh, graph that showed. Yeah, I, um, I can see because you're still sharing your browser, not the not our studio. I will share. Yes, uh, can you see? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm saying that uh, many parts of this code, when I run it, doesn't show any graph here or uh, plot. So I don't know what's the problem. So the, the problem is, as you see, that there's something running. Okay, there is still, uh, so th there is, you have run a code and this model is still running. You see this uh, red? Yes, so I just continue before I finish. Yeah, you need to either stop this process because it seems to be taking too long. Mm. And this is why in the in the in the chapter, uh, many parts of the code will not run because the author said many times that it may be computation intensive. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, it makes sense that you can't see any plots or any output. So um, if I want to stop any uh, line of code here. Uh, just um, continue to next line, or uh, what should tab to stop uh, this uh, line? In the line. Oh, so you could press on the red button, stop. Red button? Where is the red button? Yeah, this one. Uh, sorry. You know, go down. You'll see like this. Uh, I can maybe view option. Annotate this one. You annotate? Yeah, I oh, annotate. Okay, okay. Okay. So Can this is stop running, yes. Yeah, you could stop run or you could uh, go to the session mm -hmm. here and you just uh, stop the session. Yeah. Terminate R. Yes. So this would, would terminate the current session, but you would also, yeah, you would have a new session. Yeah. So um, it will not be saved? Uh, so the, the code, the script is, is, is not is saved. Like uh, you wouldn't lose the code, but if you had run some objects in your R environment, uh, you will lose them. But the code that you have here is the, still the same. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, so was that it for this week? Yes, thank you a lot for many clarification. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate your explanation now. I also need to spend some time with this uh, ERGM models to get more yes. familiar with it. But yeah, you, you've done a really great job. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I will share the link of this guy on the Slack. Yes, please. Please do. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. Bye. See you.